Hi. So I'm two weeks away from doing cooking videos and engineering videos full time. Um, this is the second blog in my Beginning Place series, uh, which is what I'm calling kind of the umbrella name of all the videos I want to do. So I have, you know, Beginning Cooks, Beginning Engineers, I might have like a bartending channel, beginning bartenders, um, but this is the entrepreneurship side, the beginning entrepreneurs, where I talk about the whole process of all my videos and what it is exactly that I'm doing. So last time I talked about entrepreneurship and startups, kind of loose definitions, the beginning of my journey, how I feel about doing this, the risks of it, the benefits, and why it's valuable to a lot of people to at least attempt some form of entrepreneurship. So a good business is all about a problem. And this may sound kind of obvious, like, duh, you know, any product or business solution is about a problem. But you'd be surprised how often that can be overlooked. Um, a lot of people just think, man, wouldn't it be cool if, you know, uh, we had slippers that had a sticky part on them, not so that you would get stuck to the floor, so that as you're walking around, you randomly clean your house like a dust buster or something. And maybe that sounds really stupid, but you'd be surprised how many people, hopefully you have thought of something like this, or I have, where you just have a random idea for maybe a product or something and you think, wow, that would be cool. That doesn't exactly address the core of entrepreneurship. There's a lot of leaders in this field who, who think that's not exactly the best way to go about starting a business. Now, it's not wrong necessarily if you think of a product or solution like that, but you shouldn't just immediately think, well, I like it. It's, it's got to be successful. Why not? How come someone hasn't, hasn't done that yet? Well, you get to something called customer discovery, right? So you think there's a problem or you think you have a good product that addresses something, but you got to make sure other people agree with you or that at least there's some sort of market. It doesn't have to be a huge market, you know, but there has to be people interested in this thing that they would buy your product. So it comes to something called customer discovery, which is the whole process of going out and talking to people and finding out if you have a product or solution that really fixes a problem they have. Now you have to be very careful about how you do this customer discovery. You shouldn't go to people and say, look, here's what I'm selling, here's what I've got. Will this fix your problem? You'll typically, a lot of times you might get two responses. If they're friends or family, you know, they might just kind of pat you on the head, you know, oh, of course, that's so great. Yeah, we'll buy this. Or if they're people that really don't want to be bothered, you know, no, get away, I'm not interested. So for customer discovery, it's important that you go somewhere where you think people are having this problem and you ask them, do you have a problem with this? But you don't get specific enough that you're telling them what you think your solution is. But you don't go too broad either that you're off topic. So it's kind of a very broad versus narrow game. You have to be kind of specific about where you're at. Uh, so for me, for example, when I was in an idea accelerator, I went with the idea that people, the problem is people do not have instructions for cooking, simple and easy instructions. You know, I thought, well, there's a lot of videos out there where it's just this beautiful person making a beautiful dish, great lighting and angles and fancy things. But at the end, you see a recipe and it's either way too quick or not detailed enough. And, and you think, hmm, how did they make this? So my videos, at least I strive to say, okay, this is going to be a very detailed but simple video that would actually show you how to make it. So for the accelerator I was in, my customer discovery, I went to groceries, simple enough, and I, and I approached people and said, do you like learning to cook online? How do you do that? Do you have issues with the videos? What kind of videos do you like? And I'm not saying this is the best way to do customer discovery, that I was the best at it, but I began to get a feel. So people began saying things like, yeah, we, we like the videos where they slow down a little bit. Or, uh, to the flip side, you're going to get people who don't necessarily want your solution. You know, I wasn't asking them, hey, look at my beginning cook video. Do you like this? No, I was saying, what do you like about cooking videos out there? Some people agreed with, you know, my main statement that, yes, we want videos that are more detailed. But other people said, no, we like the quicker, more artsy videos. 
I heard some people say they like the fancy dessert ones, they like the appetizer ones, things like that. So it's important as you begin to talk to people, take notes on what they're saying and see if you can implement it into what you want to do. If you have kind of a newer idea that you haven't really heard about and no one's really saying they think there's a need or they don't have this problem you're addressing, you might have to do something called pivoting where you approach it from a different angle or you just completely abandon it. And I think I want to have a whole video about pivoting later because pivoting is very difficult for a lot of people. It's why a lot of businesses kind of fail. They can't, you know, get with the times or change their core business strategy enough to be successful still. You know, I would say luckily for me, there were people that kind of agreed with what I'm trying to do. Now, whether there's enough or not for me to make a decent amount of money, I'll find that out this summer. And customer discovery is something you should do continuously. Even as you develop your solution or product, always keep talking to people. You have to be in touch with people. Ideally, in the beginning, you want people who really have this problem and when you get into discussions with them, they're very excited about a solution. You know, these are your beginning ideal customers. You talk about adoption curves. You have a small minority at the beginning. They're the innovators. They really want to find the solution to this problem. Your initial customer discovery, it's these people you want to get involved with. Then eventually you have, you know, more of a early majority people, a bigger chunk of people that start to get into it, but they wait until they see others doing it. Then you kind of have a main majority, a late majority, and then you have laggards. You know, I joke with my friends that sometimes with technology, I'm a laggard. You don't want to find the laggards for your idea. If you think you're addressing a problem and your solution to it is pretty innovative, pretty out there, you don't want to go talk to laggards. So I don't know what your idea is, but say it's something involving an app or it's, it's very technological and helps people do some sort of coding. You wouldn't go to, you know, like an Amish furniture store uh, or if you know people who aren't really into technology, you wouldn't go talk to them about, hey, I have this solution for apps. Well, first of all, you wouldn't even approach it by saying I have this solution, but you wouldn't go to like an old fashioned furniture store or somewhere where they don't like technology very much you know, just being very stereotypical here, you wouldn't go talk to them and say, do you have a problem with this type of coding? That makes no sense. You would go to people that you think are on the cutting edge that might actually have this problem.